What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the top electric vehicle stocks that you should consider owning in your portfolios for the year 2021. Now, before we get into all of these stocks, make sure you go down if you enjoy this video and hit that like button and hit that subscribe button so you never miss any one of these videos that I put out so you can stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks and maybe even learn about a couple of new ones. EVs have been the extremely hot sector of 2020, and we can see that a lot of them have gone up multi-thousand percent over the year. Investors have been making so much money on these stocks if they bought in at any time over the past couple months, and I think this is just the beginning for all of these companies. Now, the first one that we're going to talk about is the top Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer in China at the current time, and this is going to be NIO. NIO has been up to a lot recently. We can see over here that they recently signed a deal to build 100 electric vehicle charging and battery swap stations in China. I've gone over this in a couple of my other videos, but in short, they basically are going to have give their customers the capability, if they want to, to swap out the older battery technology in their older vehicles for the new one. Now, this is great for NEO as a company and the consumer, since the consumers don't have to purchase an entirely brand new car. They can just go and pay NEO to swap out for the new technology and it creates two points of sale for NEO, the company, since they offer an additional upgrade. Along with this, NEO has their NEO Day coming up on January 9th, and they have teased, their CEO has teased, and kind of there's been some rumors about a new 150 kilowatt hour battery. This battery would have a 900 kilometer range, putting NEO in the number one spot for range in all of the electric vehicles that are out in the market today. Now, they are also going to release the new ET7 sedan, and this is going to be a mid-size sedan, and it is expected to complete with Tesla's Model 3. Now, another thing that's been rumored about this vehicle is that it has the capabilities to have full autonomy. Now, this is not confirmed yet, and it is something that we should watch out for heading into Neo Day. But if they release the fully autonomous vehicle, this stock will go to the moon since this is something that no other electric vehicle company has been able to do thus far. In addition to this, if we look at the November sales for NEO, they sold around 5,300 vehicles. And comparing the November and October sales of 2020 to those of 2019, it's a 100% increase. So that's showing some massive growth for this company that they're able to penetrate the markets and get their products out to consumers. They have also really put a heavy focus on European expansion and they're going to have a fully functional Denmark factory throughout 2021. And this is going to have a full distribution chain with dealerships, charging and all sorts of things like that. And then in addition to all of this, NEO has also signed a deal with Mobileye when to produce mobile robo-taxis in Tel Aviv. Now, this is something that no other electric vehicle company has done as well. And if NEO can con continue to keep pushing the boundary on what we think is possible for electric vehicles right now, this company is going to stick around for a long time and it is going to be one of the most successful if not the most successful electric vehicle company in the world. Now, although there is a really high reward potential for investing in these companies, it's also possible that they don't work and it, it just doesn't go as planned. So the next stock that we're going to talk about is actually an ETF and it's going to be the iShares self-driving EV and tech ETF. And this goes by the ticker symbol IDRV. So essentially this ETF is made up of 100 companies that are all revolving around the electric vehicle space. If we scroll down, we can see some of the key facts, which you guys can take a little bit more of a look at if you want uh, on your own. But if we come down here, we can see all of the holdings in this ETF. Tesla is going to be the number one, Apple number two, and even Apple has rumors of coming out with a new electric vehicle at the end of 2023 or the beginning of 2024. We have a lot of chip makers in here, which have been doing very well throughout the course of 2020. And if we go over here, we can see that NEO makes up a 2.59% weight in this ETF. So you do get exposure to these Chinese EV companies. 
This would be a very safe ETF for storing your money if you want to have some exposure to electric vehicles without taking all the risk of putting your money into each of the specific companies. Now, you could do it that way. You're going to take on more risk, whereas this is meant to track the performance of the electric vehicle sector as a whole. And as we've seen over the past couple of years, the electric vehicle sector has been doing amazing and should continue to do so in the future with all of the technological advancements coming every single week. The next stock that I believe is going to have a very high potential for success throughout the course of 2021 and beyond is going to be XPeng. And this one goes by the ticker symbol XPEV, which you guys probably already know about. This stock went on an absolutely wild run from around the mid-teens to all the way to 72 earlier this year. And it has had a recent pullback and has kind of chilled out. But this is really kind of due to bank downgrades and nothing to do with the company as a whole. But as we can see here, these Chinese electric vehicle companies really want to expand into Europe and are really focused on expansion. So the XPeng stock is up as first electric SUV is delivered to Europe and the company will deliver 100 of its G3 vehicles to buyers in Norway, marking the first time it's directly delivered to individuals in Europe. So now these 100 vehicles were delivered that should have been finalized by today, they said at the end of this week, but we should get some of those numbers out maybe over the weekend or on Monday. The only issue with this that I see is kind of inferior to NEO is NEO has plans to open up a fully functional factory and plans on creating a whole distribution chain in Denmark. But XPeng has really only said that they have started to deliver vehicles directly to the consumers, which I think is going to be a little bit difficult for them to scale because the transportation and delivery of these vehicles is going to have take so much effort and money to do, and it's not really a cost-effective solution for this problem of expansion. When comparing this to NEO again as well, NEO had a $3.2 billion offering recently, and they said that they were going to use that mainly for R&D, like innovation, and market penetration. So that a lot of that money, NEO has $3.2 billion almost to penetrate this market in Europe. And they're going to be able to do that a lot faster than XPeng if XPeng doesn't figure out a way to raise funds and put out a very specific plan on how they want to expand into the European market. Now, this next stock that I'm going to talk about is one that I think that everybody should either stay away from for the time being or proceed with caution if you are going to invest, meaning don't throw your entire portfolio into this company. I wouldn't suggest doing anything like that anyway, but this one is going to have some issues and I think it needs to prove itself more before I would consider putting any money towards it and that's going to be Fisker. So the reason for this is that Fisker was a company back in the 2010, 2011 to 2013 time period, and they had some pretty cool cars. They had the Fisker Karma, the Fisker Karma Sport, and the Eco Chic, which was the highest costing car. Now, this car was really cool looking. It had solar panels on the top, so it was able to charge when it was driving. They were about $120,000, 120000 so they were a pretty luxury vehicle. The problem was is that after a couple months or years of this car being out in production, they had a huge problem with the cars catching on fire and in some cases, some explosions. So I think it's going to take some time for Fisker to prove itself to me, to make sure they get their technology right this time around, their sales numbers, everything like that before I would consider putting money into them. They recently IPO'd and they've been doing pretty well, but I wouldn't suggest putting any money into this company just yet. Now that's not to say that this isn't going to be a massive company in the future and it's going to have a big rebound, but I just don't trust them yet. That's going to be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed what you saw and all of the information that I gave you guys, comment down below. If you guys are invested in Fisker and you have a reason why that I am wrong on this company and that you think it is different than before, please comment your thoughts too. I'd love to have a conversation with you guys and let me know if you guys 
are planning on investing on any of these other stocks as well. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and let's get after it on Monday when the market's open. I know there's been a long weekend for everybody and everybody's kind of getting antsy wanting to get the markets back open, but we only have a couple more days.